I am not really accustomed to public speaking, although most of you know that I don't shut my mouth very often, so I hope that I can pull this off. Uh, uh, people kept giving me advice about tonight, and um, one of my sisters told me, she said, well, you can't do that. You, somebody's going to have to write that for you. Oh my God, you can't do that. I'm like, wow, well, there's a vote of encouragement. And a friend of mine said, you know, just make it funny. Cancer and death are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I also, one of my son's friends said to me, what are you going to wear? And I said, cloak of invisibility. And her husband said, nerd humor, that is always good. <laughs> so, I... <laughs> um, my story of A Second Chance is a, a family story. When I was five years old, my dad died of pancreatic cancer. And when I was um, 42, my mother died of the same disease. And my stepfather the next year, who was near and dear to all of us as well, but the death of my mother was absolutely devastating. I had spent almost every day of my life with her. Other than vacations and seeing the Grateful Dead, I had never left her side. <laughs> That's it. And so uh, it was just, it was, it was terrible. And you know, you watch someone die. It's a painful, awful death. They kind of starve to death and fade away right in front of you. So not something you ever want to see. And um, a very few years later, my brother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And he was super amazing, remarkable human being. And when he was diagnosed, this doctor at Mayo Clinic thought, well, there's something going on in this family. So uh, he suggested that my three sisters and I go to Mayo Clinic and be tested. And um, we were, and I had pancreatic cancer. And that was September, and they said I would have been dead by Christmas. So it's just, they say, well, we can take your pancreas out. <laughs> so, you know, we don't have much, if you say, yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> So um, they did, and, and my gallbladder, and my <coughs> spleen, and some other stuff, and they don't give you a lot of direction that you're going to be a complete diabetic. And then they send you to this class, you're super high on morphine, and they try and teach you how to be diabetic. <laughs> well, I don't think I figured this out at all. <laughs> so my son came to bring me home. Well, he stayed with me the last two days because my husband Peter couldn't be there any longer. We muddled through these classes just ridiculously, and, and um, just by trial and error, I did survive. I, I have figured out how to count a carbon <laughs> to insulin. So that is, that's uh, something that is, well, I mean, I guess, good, great. In the process of this whole discovery of this pancreatic cancer, they isolated a gene through our family, and the Mayo Clinic now has a study called the Kaler Study, which is my maiden name. My sister, Risa, who's here tonight, also had a pancreatectomy. Um, anyway, okay, enough of that. It's, uh, because you survived, you're given this second chance. I suffered with pretty profound survivor guilt because I honestly felt like my brother would have been a better candidate to live. He was an amazing person and, and I didn't feel like it, you know, kind of qualified to take, I didn't take his place, of course, but if I could have, if she could have been on the other foot, I would have given him a chance. So yeah, I struggled with that a lot, and I would ask, you know, I would ask why, why did I get to stay, and what am I supposed to do? I mean, it's kind of a heavy burden, you know, I might, I have to be a different person now, I have to be better, and I have to do the right thing, and, and, you know, at least that's what you tell yourself, or what I tortured myself with. And um, one of, actually one of the first times I'd really driven after the surgery, and I was on chemotherapy and radiation and kind of feeling shitty, and my daughter was in the car, I was taking her to a cello lesson, and I, I was actually not paying any attention to Isabel and just thinking, you know, why, why kind of thing. And this baby runs into the street, and I slammed on the brakes, and I thought, Isabel, get out! And she looked at me and she's like, no! So I mean, she just froze. And so I got out and I got the baby and I took it out. I mean, it was like 27th and Randolph was going to get killed. And I got back in the car after I handed it to its mother, unceremonious. She was in shock. I didn't say anything. I thought, wow, that was immediate gratification. <laughs> Thank you. That was quick. I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> well, I did continue. So again, you're given a second chance, you try to be a good person. And I mean, I like to think I tried to be a good person before, but um, 
I quit asking why at a point. Um, almost three years ago, my husband died, and we have four amazing, great, awesome kids, and he died in bed next to me, and he was 49 years old. He just went to sleep, and that was enough. I have to be here. I, this was my second chance was to be with those four kids. They couldn't, you know. And so, back to the cloak. <laughs> it's not invisible, but I am cloaked in love, and it's what I really try to do. You know, just your friends and your family, and just every day, every day is a second chance. And I honestly believe, you know, whether it's the moonrise or the sunset or whatever you're thankful for, whatever you see, whatever you can do, is just, you know, every minute is special and every day is a second chance. And I have a friend that said, I like the sixth funeral in our family. She said, you know, we have to have some celebrations. <laughs> and life is about celebrating. And that's what I do. That's what I try to do. We have a wedding coming up and, you know, there'll be it's just a whole future for, you know, everyone, all of us. And so that is what I have learned, simple as it may sound, that, you know, just try and do the right thing. I don't know. And then, you know what? You get to reevaluate it every day to say you can do it. <laughs> so that is my second chance.